Well, first of all, we have to acknowledge that no one would have wished for this time and that it's a time of great deprivation and tragedy for many, many people. So it's only with that backdrop that I can acknowledge. And in fact, our company has been performing very well. We actually entered our um, fourth fiscal quarter of last year with a head of steam. And that obviously was enhanced by people sheltering at home. Uh, so we reported great numbers for fiscal uh, 2020. And we're, of course, uh, now in our first quarter of fiscal 21. And we've given out our initial guidance, which looks pretty strong indeed. Um, what caused it? Um, you know, more demand for for the entertainment business that's been growing more rapidly than any other part of the entertainment industry for some time now. There is no doubt, though, that we greatly benefited from people being at home uh, with some time on their hands. Uh, how much, Strauss, do you think that uh, that increased engagement sticks with you for the long term? And, and do you have an idea of, of the balance between... Uh, pre-committed gamers just gaming more or, or attracting uh, new gamers altogether? Well, look, it's it's tempting only to be optimistic, but I, I'd rather use some kind of facts to answer the question. Media consultancy Activate did some homework. They said that during this period, interest in interactive entertainment's up something like 39%. And their expectations based on research is that post-crisis, when we get back to normal, and of course, at some point, we will get back to normal, that interest will still be up something like 14% uh, versus the period prior to the sheltering at home, uh, which would be more than double the growth rate we were already enjoying. Of course, Take Two has done better than that in the fourth quarter of last year, and our expectations continue to be optimistic. But that's just distinguishing between ex expected growth in the sector and expectations about what our company can do, given that it's our uh, it's our goal and strategy and typical um, result to offer the highest quality entertainment in the business. Strauss, who are the, the new gamers coming into the fold? Anything about their demographics or their engagement habits that, that you can glean to figure out whether they stay? Such a great question. Look, we definitely have seen people who did play before become re-engaged. We definitely have seen new players I think the demographic, however, remains very broad. And I think a little known fact is that the average age of a gamer today is 37. 45% are female, 55% are male. It's America's pastime. This is already a very broad based business. So I, I think you would say that people entering the business for the first time are across all ages, all types of uh, interests. Uh, all, every demographic is represented. And I think the, the, the question is, what makes this such an exciting time versus linear entertainment? And I think the answer is we offer great stories, great graphics, great characters, and great gameplay. We also offer you the opportunity to connect with families uh, and family, friends, and communities all around the world, people you know already or people you meet while playing. And you can talk to them while you're playing with them or playing against them. It's, it's, it's a very different experience than the, the lean back experience of watching linear entertainment, which, by the way, is also benefiting from shelter at home. Um, Strauss, whenever we talk about uh, the media stocks, we're, we're always talking about uh, how much the likes of, uh, of Disney, for example, can get out of franchises that it owns from Star Wars to, to other things. We just floated a, floated a graphic of your key gaming franchises. Are the franchises in gaming worth even more? I mean, how long can they go on for as we talk about the latest installment of Grand Theft Auto? Will they go on forever? Do you worry about over-milking them? Uh, talk us through how you think about that. Our goal is to create permanent franchises, and we actually believe we have the best collection of owned intellectual property in the business. We have 11 franchises that have each sold at least 5 million units with an initial release. And one of the ways that we believe we can create permanent intellectual property is by treating our property with, with incredible respect and only putting out a release when it's as close to perfection as anything can be. And probably the standard bearer for that is, is the Grand Theft Auto franchise. The last release had a 97 Metacritic score. It's unheard of. Of course, Red Dead Redemption 2, which also came from Rockstar Games, also had a 97 Metacritic score. And it's our goal also not to bring releases to market in, in, in less than until the title is ready. In terms of what the earnings power can be, it, it, it's, a, it's a matter of broad agreement that Grand Theft Auto is the highest grossing entertainment property of any type of all time. 
Strauss, I, I assume that most of your workers are still working from home right now. How has that impacted the business? And is this one where you need to have offices to have people come in and collaborate on ideas for new games or studio space? I mean, does it disrupt your pipeline? I'm so incredibly proud of our team. Look, we, we are a company that is, we're very conservative, we're very compliant, we plan ahead. We had actually planned a test work from home day on March 12th. Um, completely without regard to this crisis. And then it turns out we absolutely had to work from home. And a week later, over 5,000 of our colleagues were working effectively from home. We've seen no diminution in productivity at all. I think we've only had one product delayed. We delayed Kerbal Space Program 2 uh, for a few months. Other than that, everything is on target. And because most of us do our work on computers or on the phone or on Zoom calls, we can be very effective working from home. But let's distinguish between a highly motivated, highly committed, highly talented group of people who work at Take-Two and all of our affiliates stepping up in a tough time. Let's distinguish between that and saying, therefore, everyone should work from home. I don't think that's a great idea at all. I think we've proven that in a pinch, we'll step up and do whatever is necessary to continue to be successful. And yet I really believe that people in a physical, physical location together, collaborating, having coffee with each other, talking, this is the best way for a creative enterprise to, uh, to thrive. Finally, Strauss, just, just had a bit of a back and forth with Larry Kudlow from the White House about this issue of systemic racism. He pushed back against the idea. I know business leaders like you ha have really been speaking out in a way we have not seen, denouncing racism, denouncing the, the killing of George Floyd, but also talking about solutions and best practices that, that you can do to change your company. I wonder if you would, would weigh in on this issue and and what you're doing. Well, this is a heartbreaking issue. Um, do I believe that that we have racism in this country and that it incites violence? Absolutely. How could I believe otherwise? Am I sick over the recent tragedy of George Floyd's murder? Naturally, I am. All right-thinking people are. But what's even more saddening and sickening is this is hardly a singular experience. This has been going on for a very long time. Shame on us for just waking up now. Uh, we stand in solidarity with uh, people around the world uh, who of color and people around the world, all people around the world, who know that we can and must do better. Um, our company has raised many millions of dollars um, in this time, and we're donating to charities that fight racism, that fight injustice. That's the very least that we can do. Um, and our culture at our company is one of inclusion and common decency uh, and mutual respect. Um, what we've learned in this time, what we need to learn in this time, is just how much more progress must be made um, if we're going to be the kind of society that we say we are, and, and I think that nearly all of us believe we must be.